Rail travel is the most soothing mode of transportation. There is no better way to take in a country's beauty and landscapes than from a carriage window. This is what Robert Louis Stevenson thought when it came to seeing landscapes. He thought nothing was more vivid than from the train. Hundreds of charming rural railway lines exist in the United Kingdom, providing aesthetic pleasures as well as access to fantastic hikes and picturesque villages and cities. It boasts more tourist railroads per capita than any other nation, bringing millions of visitors each year. In all sections of the UK, Network Rail offers a wide choice of day and longer rower tickets to enable tourists to make the most of their surroundings and experience the attractions of the subsidiary lines. In this video, we've compiled a list of the top 7 best train journeys in the UK. Welcome to our YouTube channel. And before starting the video, don't forget to hit the like button, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. Number 7. Pathali to Mackinac From the time the railway leaves the southernmost lip of Snowdonia National Park, this route is blessed by nature. Passengers glance out the window to sights of long grass driven with waist-high wildflowers, foffy clouds hovering above forest-fringed peaks, hikers with sticks wave in the distance as stream winks and shine in the sunlight. The route follows the main deers of the River Difi until it breaks wide onto the Cardigan Bay shoreline, sculpted by fingers of creamy sand and dunes dissolving into the sea. Not far beyond Dalway Junction Station, via the window, one can view rugged beaches blasted by teal green waves and campers stationed on hills, their tents blowing violently in the wind. The trip comes to an end with a stroll through the market town of Pathali which is surrounded by cloud-covered mountains in sand. Number 6. St. Ives Bay Line This 10-minute voyage between the Cornish hamlet of St. Earth and beach resort of St. Ives provide passengers with spectacular waves of the Cornish coast. There are birds that fly through pools in the hilly estuary. Then as the train climbs sand dunes and circle port kidney sands, breathe in and let go of your stress. The water is blue, stripped with green, as the train glides over Carvish Bay, where sun bathers abound on its golden dunes. Passengers can smell salty in the air via an open window. Then you arrive in St. Ives. Go to the Port Minister Beach Cafe for crab, chili, garlic, lingevini, washed down with a lemon and thyme GNT. Number 5. Settle to Carlisle. This portion, which first opened in May 1876, is one of the England's remaining major Victorian lines, which British Rail attempted to shut in the 1980s. The 72-mile length was rescued thanks to the efforts of activists, locals, railway enthusiasts, and it continues to entice tourists and commuters traveling through the Yorkshire Dales and North Pennines. Passengers get off the train at Seattle Station, which has burgundy trim and bright flower baskets. They're already surrounded by sloping fields of sheep which are fenced in by the region's unique dry stone walls. The train negotiates terrain that frequently seems to tilt and slide, plunging into tunnels, zipping over bridges and squeezing between rock cuts that rise around the carriage. The voyage culminates when the train negotiates the one of four feet high Rebel Hat Viaduct, where hikers wave from below through rivers, hamlets and miles of the tranquil countryside. Before the train arrives in the old city of Carlisle, claims right for views of the Vale of Eden, with its hedgerows and farms spotlit by the light, breaking through low-hanging clouds. Number 4. Inverness to Kyle of Lacalche Passengers on a train ride across Scotland may enjoy practically everything they might desire in a little under three hours. The train canters out of Inverness, flanked by hot pink heather, down the southern side of the Bewley Firth, soon driving circles around the fresh water locks, cluster of white homes hidden under woods, and mottled moors teeming with deer. Silver bodies of water, possibly a lone boat anchored to a pier, can be seen peering through massive Scots pine blocks. The beautiful town of Plockton, with its palm trees, pocket-sized buildings, islands streaming around the bay, as well as many silky seals is worth a detour. As the Isle of Skye looms ahead, Pick up the truck again, proceed to Kyle of Le Calche. Number 3. Newcastle to Edinburgh Don't be deceived into believing that a high-speed train between two large cities can provide at least one breathtaking vista. 
This route weaves passengers in and out of the patchwork landscape and misty blue ocean vistas as it follows England's north and east coast in the southern Scotland. The train rapidly shakes off the dust, guts off the city, and blares its horn across the fields of sheep and picket fence farms, despite the fact that first few minutes of the trip contain the familiar sight of low-hanging cables and warehouses. Given the speed of travel, flashes of canary yellow rapeseed fields, the gleaming black skins of Aberdeen Angus cows, and villages vanish as quickly as they appear. So take a seat on the ride, look back. When the horizon starts to blur, the edge drops away, exposing a blaze of North Sea blue. You will know the sea is approaching as you twist through the woodland and thunder over bridges. In addition to Lomo introduced a new service in the late 2021, with one-way rating beginning at only 14.90 pounds. The train, which is a part of Lumu's brand new 100% electric powered fleet, will not only make travel more economical, but will also be far more carbon efficient than most other versions. Number 2. Glasgow to Mali This train chugging out of the Glasgow Queen Street follows the River Clyde for a while before speeding away into the Scottish countryside. It goes up and around the boony shore of Loch Lomond, clinging to a mountainside trimmed with birch trees surrounded by glints colored with the mauve of wild heather. Move to the front of the train and watch back as it curves around the horseshoe band at the foot of the Bend Doran before continuing onto the Fort William not long after Tendrum. It's a fun summer trip, but endure the wind and precipitation and a winter trek will reward you with frozen rivers ice daggers hanging from the trees. The train passes via the Glenfinnan Viaduct, which spans 21 arches at the top of the low shield and is read on by Harry Potter aficionados as the Hogwarts Express route. Number 1. The Caledonian Sleeper is one of the only two night trains surviving in the UK, connecting London to Edinburgh and Glasgow on the Lowlander route and Aberdeen, Fort William and Inverness on the Highlander route. After a refurbishment in 2019, the train now looks more like a mobile hotel than a vehicle transportation. The train provides a delightful way to lie down for the night, arrive fresh for the day ahead with double beds, ain't sweetie bathrooms, and dimmable lightning. Board stow your belongings and go to the dining car for smoked salmon, haggis, neefs, and tatties, and a whiskey cream sauce raising the blinds in the morning to the morning mist hanging over the moors, then drifts asleep as London fades away in the darkness. It may be difficult for jaded commuters to believe, but Britain's trains were once the envy of the world. Take one of these traditional services if you wish to experience the fatting elegance of the bygone era. This is all from today's video. Thanks for watching and remember to like, share and subscribe.